Well, my friends, welcome back. This is Dr. Dog, and we will continue our examination of correlational analysis. And in this little lecture, we're going to examine the Pearson product moment coefficient, which we represent as the Pearson R. Now, there are some things that you need, terms you need to know, and some of these you will remember. A bivariate correlation coefficient is a value that expresses the strength of the correlation between two variables. Now remember that bivariate means two variables, correlation is relationship, coefficient then is a value that would express the correlation between two variables. And also we're going to in this lecture examine the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, which is represented by the lowercase r, which is simply one way of expressing the strength of the correlation between two variables. Now there are some points to remember. The Pearson R is founded upon the assumption that the two variables are normally distributed. In other words, if, if you're comparing two things, you're assuming that the distributions of each are normal. And that's a very important point to note. Most people overlook that, and we'll deal with that later in this course. If the variables are not normally distributed, other measures are required. You will begin to hear a term in this course called uh, a non-parametric. A non-parametric methodology is a methodology which handles non-normally distributed curves. So the Pearson R is founded upon the assumption that the two variables are normally distributed. Now I've drawn you a little chart here that I want you to look at. It talks about this value, the Pearson correlation coefficient and that it will rest between 1 and negative 1. Now you will remember when we started talking about correlations earlier, we said that they can be positive or negative. We also said that they can be strong or weak. Now in the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, what, we have, what Pearson did is he established 1 as the very best positive correlation and negative 1 is the very best negative correlation. You will recall that 1 is the decimal 1.00, which is 100%. So that 1 represents 100% positive correlation. Negative 1 is the decimal negative 1.00, or 100% negative correlation. So a Pearson product moment correlation coefficient will rest between negative 1 and 1. And it is generally expressed as two decimals. That's very interesting. Now the Pearson product moment correlation rests between 1 and negative 1, with 1 being 100% positive, negative 1 being 100% negative, 100% positive meaning they're in absolute agreement together, negative 1 meaning they're absolute disagreement, but we denote a strong correlation to rest between negative 1 and negative 0.5 and 0.5 and 1. Now that would be represented here, negative 1 is less than equal to r is less than equal to negative 0.5, or 0.5 is less than r, less than uh, 1. Now, that would be called a strong correlation. So if a value has a uh, Pearson product moment correlation coefficient falling between minus 1 and 0.5, or between 5 and 1, then that's considered a strong correlation. Now some will put a 0.7 or negative 0.7 and call it a very strong correlation. Now here's one way of saying that. You see how cumbersome that is? It falls here or it falls there. Generally what we do is that we just simply square these values and say r squared is greater than negative 0.5 squared or 0.25 and if you do that on the, on the positive 0.5 over there you have a positive 0.25. So the, the way of handling that is saying r squared is greater than 0.25. So instead of having to write two statements, you can just talk about r squared and uh, say it as one value there. Now we also have a, we have a strong correlation, we have a moderate correlation. Moderate correlation would fall between negative 0.5 and negative 0.3 or 0.3 and 0.5. And of course another way of saying that is that the r square is less than 0.25 and greater than 0.09. We just square these values. And then of course you can have weak 
to no correlation. It falls between negative 0.3 and 0.3. Some folks put a 0 .1, 0 0.1 in here, negative 0.1 and a positive 0.1, and they say from negative 0.3 to negative 0.1 is weak, and from 0.1 to 0.3 is weak. We're just going, for our purposes, say that if it falls in this value, it is either weak or has no correlation whatsoever. Now, here's your table to examine your values. If r squared is greater than or equal to 0.25, we will call it strong. If it falls from 0.25 to 0.09, we'll say it's a moderate correlation. And if it's less than 0.09, we'll say that it has weak to no correlation. Now, there are some important parts to remember as you deal with uh, correlational research. And, and one of these is, is that some correlations are just absolutely meaningless. Uh, for instance, what if we drew a correlation between hat size and uh, age? Well, I mean, it, we, we might find a correlation there, but it would be meaningless. And there are many correlations that are established that just simply are meaningless, but that's the way it goes. R is a measure of a linear relationship, and as we move forward, we will examine uh, linear correlation or linear uh, 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 relationships, uh, we, we, linear regression, we'll do multiple linear regression, those type things. But a li linear means that the points can be trapped in a, and traded in a line. If you have some sort of curved relationship in the points, then it's going to show that you don't have a relationship when in fact you do. R does not say anything about cause and effect. Uh, simply because there's a relationship doesn't mean that either of the variables causes the other. So when you're doing correlational analysis with the Pearson product R, you need to remember that, you know, uh, just because there's a correlation doesn't mean that one caused the other. Well, I want to thank you very much for your support. We're going to move forward with this in just a moment. But I remind you that your, your patronage keeps my family fed. And it's important to me, besides that, that I have extra funds to deer hunt and do the things that I enjoy doing. Live long and prosper, in the words of the old Trekkies. <laughs>